Hey, let's get into this. Uh, this is the Rubik's Cube Spin, and it's an E.C. Abrams tutorial, so let's f***ing learn. Alright, everybody. So, today we're going to learn how to do this kind of Rubik's Cube turning thing. Uh, this is actually something I used in the intro for a tutorial a long time ago about syncing motion typography to audio. And I got a lot of requests for how to do the Rubik's Cube turning thing, and I just didn't get around to it because other topics came up, but... Now we're actually going to learn how to do that, and it's actually a good primer for anybody getting into using 3D comps and nesting comps and using common elements between compositions. So let's uh, get into it, and first we're going to look at what exactly is happening here. So pretty much we have three comps that make up the three stacks, and all they're doing is rotating, and that's about it. So each of those comps is a common comp that is the 3D element, and then some 3D text that are stuck on the faces in the way we want, and then that common element is made up of six other elements to make up all the sides of a cube or whatever. So let's, uh, let's start over by uh, starting a new composition, and we will call this thing uh, whatever. In fact, that's totally not important. What is important is that we're working in 1080p, so any of the numbers that I say for size are relevant to this being a 1080p uh, composition. So, first thing we're going to want to do is make that common element that's going to be the same for everything. So, what do we need? Basically, we need to make six sides that are going to make up a cube. And in our case, we're making three parts of a cube, so let's start by making those. So, I'm going to go a new... Uh, shape layer. Uh, shape layers are vector based things that uh, they scale wonderfully and they're very flexible. Now we're gonna make a rectangle and this rectangle, the final cube we want is gonna be 600 by 600. That's just the size I find looks nice. So what I'm gonna do is make something that is 600 by 200 because each of the sides will be a third of the total thing. So each one is going to have to be 600 by 200. Now, we went add rectangle in here, and that means that we also need to now go add uh, fill, and we're also going to need to go add a stroke. Now, we could have just gone up here and clicked and dragged something out, but then we would have had to reset the position. And the position is going to be really key in lining up all of your 3D objects. So try to do it precisely, and try to imagine that uh, everything is in 3D space on a Cartesian plane. So let's try to uh, get this going. We're just going to set the fill to white. That's okay. We'll set the stroke to black. And uh, black, 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 like that. Okay, give that a go, and uh, we're actually going to increase the stroke up to, say, 6, and we'll give this a go. Now, the stroke is important because that's going to fill in the gaps that happen when you sort of fake 3D in After Effects. So, without further ado, let's uh, get 3Ding. Make your layer 3D, clicking this box here, and now it is a 3D layer, and the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, affect its anchor point by pushing the anchor point out about, uh, we're just going to say 300 pixels. Now why 300? Because 300 is half of 600, which would put the anchor point right in the middle of the cube. So, looking here, uh, because our fictitious cube is going to be 600 by 600 by 600, we need the sides to come out 300. If we take our active camera and we move to the top, we can see that the anchor point is now pushed back behind. So now if we do something like rotating it, that we can see that it rotates around that axis. And that's going to be important because when we take this and we call this the front, we duplicate it, call this the back, and then we can just click rotate here and uh, rotate this thing around a cool 180 degrees, and boom, we now have the front and back. Duplicate those, and uh, we can call them things like uh, like side or whatever, but at the end of the day, what we're going to be doing is uh, trying to rotate these things around da, 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 to line up, and now we have a bunch of sides. And when we look at this through another view, like custom view 1, we can see we have the sides of a box. So, so far so good. We are creating the crap out of this thing. All the position is still at zero, and all the anchor points reference the same spot. 
Now we also need a top and bottom because as we saw in the example you can actually see little bits of the top and bottom when things are turning. So you can see there are parts of the top and bottom that are going to be noticeable depending on the angle. So we want to try to cover those up and so we will be taking something like maybe the right or whatever, doesn't matter, duplicate that. Now we're going to be rotating it up like this. So rotate this thing like minus 90 or 270 or however. We're using the orientation for all of these so try to try to keep that together. Now the other thing we're going to change here is we're going to be changing its anchor point down to a hundred. Meaning that the face is a hundred points away from the anchor point which will put it as you can see stuck right on top because these things are 200 high if it's 100 away from the anchor point that'll put it at the edge and it also needs to be changed in size so hit U twice U U to bring up all the properties and change the size to 600 by 600 which will fill that up nicely and then we'll take this and change its fill to black and another thing we're going to want to do is touch up the corners here a little bit because you can see a little bit that it's peeking out a bit too much because of the uh, because of the stroke we put on it so dial that back down to three and that'll tuck it right inside and then we won't have that won't have that biting over the edge there now let's call this thing the top and now we'll duplicate it call that the bottom and now we will change its rotation to be 90 and it's on the bottom now what you might want to do just to clarify for yourself is have the uh, have the bottom on the bottom of this stack and all that fun stuff so back in the active camera we're going to select all of these layers here and we're going to go layer pre-compose or as you can see you can go command shift C or control shift C and pre-compose those and we're gonna call this common level meaning this is a common element that's going to be used over and over again. So common level, boom. Now this next step is important. This button here means collapse transformations. And in a 3D object, so we need to make it 3D as well, that all of this thing is going to be viewable. All of its 3D parts, we're going to be able to see them. So let's say we just made it regular 3D, right? Now I take up its rotation here and I start moving it around. It's really just a plane that we're moving in 3D. When I hit Collapse Transformations, it turns into a 3D object. So basically what that means is everything inside of it is now visible and movable here in this composition. So that's what this button Collapse Transformations means. So basically this will allow us out here in another comp to rotate this thing around. Pretty good, right? So let's just uh, go ahead here and reset that. So, what do we need to do? We need to add some text to this. So, I'm just going to uh, type in something. Whoop. And take that. And then uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking these things, making them 3D. Now you can see it's disappeared because now it's actually, it's inside this object here. It's been, it's been stuck into it. So we're going to take this word whoop, parent it to uh, this thing here. And uh, what we're going to need to do is change its anchor point to bring it outside of the face here. And there we go. That's kind of got it. So set this thing here to 300. And uh, like just like we did with the faces. So it is 300 away from its anchor point, And it is now stuck firmly on the outside. Now this says whoop. And I guess we could, we could do whatever. Let's use the, uh, the text controls here to really use those to define what it is we're looking at. We don't want to use the scale too much because when you scale things you're also scaling them in 3D which moves it closer and further away from the anchor point so that gets annoying but use the text here to control the text if you're sticking text on the faces. So let's uh, duplicate that and uh, we're going to need to rotate it towards uh, the other side here. So move it to uh, to 270 over there and now you can't really see it so go from active camera to what I think is the right side I might, might have been wrong maybe that was actually on the left it's on the left side I can't really tell I have no idea where these things are hold on active camera let's, let's go back to custom view here so we've got whoop over here 
and then we've got whoop 2 over there so, so we need to go to different custom view here we go so here's whoop again now we can't see it because it seems to have been stuck inside there somehow so let's just tweak this a little bit this is one of those strange problems that happens in 3D that it starts to get confused even though mathematically we know you know it's spot on like if this is 300 out and this surface is 300 out why is this not showing up I don't freaking know so just try to get it as close as possible and one of the things is don't worry too much about these things we're gonna be moving them quickly and uh, let me just give this a new D so that's that side whoop D and then the last one let's duplicate this rotate it around click 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 to uh, to 180 and then uh, let's try to find the view that that's on that'll probably be the, the view called back and looking at the back we've got do do whoop d do okay so we've got our text all around this thing alright so what we're gonna do is just collapse those and I'm actually gonna set this and then let's take all of these things here and we're going to go just like we did control or command shift C precompose this let's call it level one now again we have to hit this collapse transformation stuff so that in this comp we are still able to enjoy being able to transform all of these things around in such a way that we can see them all now it seems like we're having a bit of an error here that uh, the D part isn't coming out where is it where's that D so sometimes these problems happen that it is unable to for whatever reason uh, show or render the text correctly in the manner that we hope it will but uh, hopefully we're able to overcome that problem uh, by just tweaking things just a little bit so just remember it's not perfect so we have level one done now what we're gonna need to do is uh, we're gonna need to go up here into the project panel now let's remember that this is level one new now what we're gonna do is duplicate this and uh, you can call it whatever you want but what we're gonna have to do is bring this here down into here and uh, make sure that it's collapse transformations in 3d are on now we're gonna move it uh, you know roughly uh, 200 units up or down uh, let's move it down or up I don't remember why these numbers are backwards but anyway so we've got whoop whoop uh, let's make another one duplicate that bring it out okay something like this uh, now change its position bring that one to 740 so it's there so now we have three layers of whoop now why did we duplicate them in the project panel this is important because if you go in and just duplicate these in the timeline what you're gonna get is a bunch of things that reference the same composition and what you want is unique compositions so that we can go into level you know this one and we can change its whoop to say happy and then change its D to say birthday or birth D you know and you know make the this part here say uh, bums or whatever whatever you want them to say and then when we go back here into the comp it's changed see if we were just duplicating this then we'd be in a problem because every time you edit one it edits all of them so let's just edit these up to have totally different uh, words then we go back here and we have some text and we have some things that we can rotate so you take these things and then you pull up their uh, rotation and now we're gonna use the Y rotation here to spin them around and uh, then you can just do that so what I recommend doing is taking the Y rotation here and then we're just gonna crank it ahead you know one you know turn it one degree go ahead a couple and then turn it minus two degrees and then uh, go ahead one two three four five six or something and then just crank this crank this a good 90 actually go go a little bit past 90 go uh, go like to uh, to like 94 
something like that. Go ahead a couple, go back to like 88, and then uh, go ahead a couple, and now we'll bring it to rest at 90. So you can see this creates a little bit more of a nuanced motion that it kind of like revs up, twists, and then goes back. Take all of these keyframe assistants, easy ease them, and then uh, that'll be cool. Now we want it to kind of hold for a bit, so hold down shift and go page down. One, two, three, four, maybe. Hold hold for four, 40 frames or something. Grab all of these frames, copy them, uh, control C, command C, whatever, and then paste them. Now you'll see, oh no, we've gone back to the first frame. Well, that's okay. Leave all of these things selected, and then grab the value here, click and drag it up to 90. And what that'll do is, it takes all of the keyframes you've selected and drags them ahead 90 points. So that means that for this brief period here, we're held at 90, and then we click and we move all the way to the next one. And then uh, we can go ahead and repeat that process. One, two, three, four, ahead. Grab all of these, control C, control V. Grab this, crank it ahead to a full 180 which we're going to 180 because that's where this last bunch of keyframes ended so we're basically moving the start to be the ending of that and then plunk and then it goes to nothing so so yeah we got whoop dee doo anyway so we've got keyframes there now we want to take these keyframes copy them so when you click on the property it's going to select all the keyframes of that property and then go back to the beginning select these other two layers and paste them in and uh, now we've got everybody rotating at the same time and let's just uh, select all these keyframes and then move them ahead so that they start where the last thing ends again same thing here click and drag to where they end and now we've got uh, something that's like whoop you know birthday Abrams anyway this doesn't make any sense but on yours you can do a way better job of actually having words that make sense and this will help you align things in such a way that now you can like select them and drag them apart and move them and all that good stuff but the idea here is just that what you want to do is nest everything so that you know we can go into this thing and then we can select this common element here and then in here we can change all the colors or thickness or whatever so let's say I want you know I want all of these things here to be filled in with a certain color or whatever then you can just go in here edit this thing you know now it's all green whatever that's great because then we go in here they're all green and then we go to this Rubik's Cube here everything's green so that's pretty rad or you know you can go in here and you can grab this thing and you know you can just screw around with the colors and stuff individually but it's it's this duplicating of common compositions that saved us so much time if I wasn't talking to you about this I could have done this in about like 10 minutes or something so the idea is that we want to save ourselves a lot of time by making common elements that we can reuse throughout the composition and uh, you know here uh, here in the main comp it's all easy because we just have to keyframe one value and the rest of the 3d stuff takes care of itself uh, if you want to worry about all of like the the gradients and blah 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 that I use I have a tutorial about gradients but in short this is how you make that Rubik's Cube motion a lot of you guys have been asking about it so Happy fan service from EC Abrams. Uh, I hope you like this. I hope this is helpful in using 3D comps and nested comps. Uh, if you have any questions about that, just take it one thing at a time. I know it's a lot to get your head around, but you know this idea of nested comps is going to help you out when you start doing larger, more complex things. And uh, it's really the difference maker when it comes to making effective use of your After Effects time especially when it comes to motion graphics and repetitive motion graphics elements. So, again, this is Evan Abrams. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, if you have any tutorials, anything that you want to see, let me know, and I will try to make that, uh, I'll try to make that content for you. Uh, thanks for watching my stuff and subscribing, so I want to give something back, and I'll try to respond to as many tutorial requests as possible. So, I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the Internet. Oh, hey, it's the intro again. I just figured I'd show it to you again in case you forgot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Share this with your friends. And let's all try to learn something cool about After Effects.